Welcome to Rewired. I'm your host, Laura Schwamm, and tonight's transformational topic is Soul Fire Twin Flame Coaching with life coach, spiritual teacher, author, among many other things. Her name is Helen Davis. Helen Davis's journey of self-discovery and healing was shaped by a childhood affected by emotional detachment and disassociation. So understand that we don't always have just shadows. We actually have gifts that are hidden in the shadows. So on her path, she was drawn to the world of psychological studies and then theater. theater. She found solace in the art of storytelling and performance, seeking to express her inner turmoil and suppressed emotions like many other people that have suffered from trauma. She dreamed of a life in a bustling New York City. Helen faced a period of deep depression when her aspirations just seemed out of reach, trying to be a perform theatrical performer. So she decided to go to a therapist in Germany. She discovered a renowned sense of purpose and direction, helping her set achievements and goals and reclaimed her passion for personal growth by embarking on a transformational journey across 27 states of America in 2018. Spanning from the East to the West, her odyssey led her to Sedona, where she found solace in the tranquil embrace of Bell Rock, a sacred site where she felt a profound connection to the spiritual energy of the land. Amidst the red rocks and the desert landscape, she encouraged monks. She had in heard inside of herself monks singing messages of peace and enlightenment that resonated so deeply within her soul. Now, however, it wasn't always easy. Helen's path took an unexpected turn and she gradually let go of material possessions as we all tend to associate ourselves with those possessions to embrace a simpler life. So it wasn't just an easy process. She faced challenges such as limited resources, enduring days without proper facilities and having to travel long distances from water, for water and other, other resources. Now, despite the hardship she endured, she found moments of grace and clarity in the midst of adversity. Helen's journey of self-discovery and spiritual awakening accumulated into a pivotal moment when on the brink of uncertainty, she found love and commitment in an engagement. During her own experiences, Helen emerged as a guiding light for others on the twin flame path, offering coaching, support, and healing through her online platforms and, and her interpersonal gatherings, transitioning into a realm of life coaching through the United States and social media, including YouTube, so you can always find her. Now, she is actually teaching on a global level embracing her creativity and spirituality. She's channeled her energy into coaching and learning how to live off the land because that's what she had to do. She learned how to do that firsthand. So she has fabulous healing retreats, her and her twin flame partner. Now in her eloquent storytelling and profound insights, because she's again by theater, the trait that she's, just weaves a tapestry of resilience, love, and transformational energy, inviting others to embrace their own journey of healing, empowerment, and spiritual growth. Her fiance and her craft magical Mandela's bespoken works of art designed to inspire and empower others in their own journey of self-discovery. Now at the heart of her creative endeavors is her twin flame partner, we can't do a twin flame show without mentioning the twin flame partner. Now, his he brings in music that is very healing and it's very transformational. It helps people heal their spiritual wounds. Now, for those of you that don't know what a twin flame relationship actually is, just to give you a little background, it's usually what we perceive is our second part of ourselves. Now, there is no half of a person 
However, we all go through experiences that are traumatic that make us unconsciously create blocks. So we learn through the people that come into our life. And so our twin flame, there is an unconditional love that we have for this person that it's not logical. It doesn't logically make sense. The person feels like home. The person feels as if they should be in your life. However, they trigger you. They trigger you. And so it's, and they trigger you because they hold up a mirror of who you are. And a lot of times the twin flame goes through si similar experiences in childhood. And those experiences wouldn't be able to be transmuted without spiritual blocks. So I'm really excited to have my good friend as well as healer be on the show to share all about twin flame because I just know how to cut the surface of it. So we're going to bring on the expert. Welcome, Helen Davis. Thank you for so much for being on my show. Hi, Laura. I'm so excited. And it's been so long that we've really talked with each other. So I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, how can a person identify if they have met their twin flame? And you explain in your words what you perceive a twin flame relationship is. Okay, so I haven't heard about twin flames until about 2013. That was when I started to get into the topic and I started to learn about the topic of two souls emerging together, being one. Um, the twin flame journey is something very special and very rare to find. But if you do, you're going through a lot of different adventures with each other. A lot of times you get through separations where it is all about discovering yourself again. It's like a, an awakening. First, you wake up to the other person and the other person who's like the perfect reflection of you. And then you are going through times of fear because, you know, some people aren't ready to be in a relationship like that. It's really intense. When I met Timothy, that was in 2015. And the first two weeks were amazing. I mean, they were incredible. We were just on fire. We saw each other on weekends and we were texting each other all the time. And then there was a break and he was afraid and I wasn't ready to, to be the queen the queen in my relationship. It's, it's just so people know that within a twin flame relationship, there is this unconditional love, but there's always a runner and a chaser. And usually that runner is doesn't stay the runner the entire time of the relationship. The twin flame tends to swap places often and because it's finding balance. It's finding balance through finding union with each other. Mm-hmm. Exactly. For example, when, <laughs> when I met him, I had really, really long hair and he only had short hair. And when we got together, his hair grew and I, my hair just stayed the same. My <laughs> hair never really grew. It's, it's funny. It's like we were reflecting each other. He was more, he became more feminine and I became a little more masculine. So we were balancing each other out. Right. And that is very important because the whole point to understand about twin flame, and I love this, it's <laughs> that again there's god is both man and woman and so the feminine divine and the masculine divine we all have however we tend to be imbalanced in one meaning one one is stronger and so and sometimes when there's a lot of wounds because we've gone through an experience that's traumatic then what winds up happening is we become really blocked blocked so you someone that's very uh masculine is very logical analytical they're very structured they're very organized they have a lot of like fire energy where someone that, that's intuitive and so, someone that's very feminine is intuitive and and so it doesn't really matter it's about the gender what it matters is is about that characteristic so what helen's talking about is the whole balancing out and integration of those spiritual blocks exactly yeah so exactly. so i love the fact that you've lived off the land and so 
I, I wanted to talk about your new ebook that you mm -hmm. that you just came out. Tell us about that your ebook and and you know you feel free to read a page or two from it. I would love to. So my ebook is called "Be Unique." an invitation to live a free and happy life. It's not just for twin flames, it's for empaths, it's for anyone who wants to have more self-care and get into their energy. It's um, a 40, 47 page book with some poetry of mine and um, it's basically the way I work as life coach. When you read the book, it's like I'm talking to you. <laughs> the colors are in purple for transformation and I have beautiful pictures in them to inspire. And some people who have read that book have said that they already felt the healing energy going through them when they just started to read. And my whole life, I wanted to have a book where I can just rediscover myself and feel like my, my soul emerges and transforms. And I never found that book. So I thought, okay, I have to write that book. <laughs> it's yes. a book I have always wanted did. to have. <laughs> And you wrote it and you published it and you did it all, like I said, and that's that creative energy, that feminine creative energy that I self-published it. Flows. <laughs> and it flows a lot because you are balanced because of your twin, because you've learned how to compromise. You've learned that's the thing with trauma. When we're in trauma, we're so in survival, we can't really see anyone else's pain because we're in pain. So the thing is, the only healing, the only healing magic pill per se is love. Exactly. Self-love so, especially. And the journey of the divine twin flame is also to get into your self-love and self-energy. And I always say you transform from being a princess into becoming a queen. And that's true because we also grow up and queens uh, unfortunately they know they know the other half of things because they've experienced pain exactly exactly you know, queen will take care of herself and she will be an equal to her partner whereas a princess always relies on her prince and if they're both prince and princess then it's like two inner children playing with each other but they cannot find the true connection of true love so becoming queen and becoming king is the journey. And it's a beautiful journey. It can be very painful and it can last a few years. But if you're lucky and you really work on yourself, you can really get together in union with your partner. And that's where I come in, where I want to help people. When they're going through the dark night of the soul, when they go through separation, I want to be there for them. And I want to listen to them, listen to their story and help them to reflect on what is going on and where they can work on themselves. And a part yeah. of that is is my book, too. My my book is also working on these topics. It's a great book for empaths. It's um, it, it has about three pages on if you want to read it, you can discover if you are an empath or not just by looking at some of the signs and signals and um, I I would love to read to you one of those parts if you like from my book. I love that. I have it here as an as an ebook <laughs> on Kindle, and I might as well just do that. So the the book is well. One of the chapters is called "No One Else Is Like You." Tell your own story. No one else walks in your shoes or lives your life. So don't expect others to understand what's deep inside of you, especially if you don't know much about yourself in the first place. They tell you you don't have to explain yourself to anyone, but if you don't, then others will make up stories about you behind your back and not even consciously. They tell others what they think they know about you. No facts, but something made up from what they heard from others and what they make up in their own heads. What others say about it and what they think they heard has nothing, nothing to do with you. It's their interpretation. And in the end, you can't do anything about it. Everyone has a different life, even if they have parallels in life with you and similar emotions. They don't have your experience. So share it. 
in words, in music, through yourself as a role model and storyteller. Maybe no one will care, or maybe you get to inspire others through your stories. Either way, it is your story to tell. They may be inspired by your wisdom, by your love, by your music. Live the life of your dreams. It's worth trying, isn't it? Go out there and share your words, for no one can speak from their experience the way you can from yours. I love it. So. <laughs> I love it because, and the thing is, empaths, unhealed empaths tend to need a lot of healing because they've had to continuously compensate for their sensitivity. We're seen as the squeaky wheel, you know, and a squeaky wheel is someone that, oh, you're, you're just a problem. Like you're going to make things difficult. And when you get that enough times, you begin to compensate because you don't want to be, everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants to be liked. So that what I love about that segment is what you're saying is it doesn't really matter like what anyone else thinks. We mm -hmm. tend to get caught up in what other people think unconsciously just because we want to fit in. And if you're not healed, this is one way. Now you may say, I don't have that problem. Well, you would know if you saw what, if your relationships were difficult, you would know if you had financial problems, you would know if you have health problems. There's other ways to determine because a lot of times we build up that wall where we definitely don't want to see the um the the wound we don't want to look at it so I love I love that and so it's on Kindle so you got to check it out and I will definitely put the link so that you can find it if you you haven't but I'm mm -hmm. curious how can anyone maintain harmony within a flint twin flame connection because again you're with someone that's triggering you. So they're triggering your own wounds from childhood that have absolutely nothing to do with that person. But it's almost like that person is going up to like, if you stubbed your toe, they're actually going up to like your toe with a hammer and hitting it over and over and over again in the same place. So how can we stay balanced psychologically, emotionally, spiritually? What are your recommendations? The very first thing and most important is not to take anything personally. Yeah, don't take anything. <laughs> it's oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not all harmony, even if you've been together for seven years, like we have. You know, we have gone through three big separations, and the last one was in 2020. So we can talk about that. But anyway, important is not to take anything personally to learn to express your emotions in a way that is not offensive. Like instead of saying you, 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 it would be better to say, it hurts me. I feel like to me, this is important. It is important for me that you listen to me. Another very important part is to really listen. And we have stopped to listen. We are distracted by so many things in the world and everything that's going on, including television, including, you know, we play games on our phones. We play, we play things. We just, you know, we want to be excited all the time, but we don't sit down and we don't listen to our partner. So if we can at least take an hour a day, maybe that's too much, but at least once a week, <laughs> we sit down. <laughs> no. and well, I think every day hour. is important. I mean, you spend every day with your partner. It shouldn't I feel like a chore, though, right. is what, what you're saying. It's that. Right. And, and, and I feel like <laughs> that's that's there's intimacy problems and intimacy problems create trust. Trust problems create intimacy problems. And that when we feel separate from our partner, we actually tend to feel separate from ourselves. We really feel imbalanced when my you're in a Exactly, exactly. My partner always said um, that I am his best mirror. I'm his favorite mirror. But that also means we reflected directly onto each other. And we do live 
isolated a lot. Like we do live together. We have been living, been together for seven years, known each other for nine. And uh, we have been living in a 33 foot travel trailer for a long time. Sometimes we just lived in our truck. We have lived in like a small space together that had a bathroom within its own, in, in, within the bedroom <laughs> in an Airbnb. So we've gone through, you know, being in the, like really, really tiny places into being in huge spaces. And we had to learn to be okay with each other. And one of the things that helped us was playing games together, actually, like video That's games. That's so important. And like yeah, the, the and playing together like people yeah. don't realize that they lose that that they get caught up in everyday work and everything that they they lose that mm -hmm. um that definitely playing together and definitely um i i just think that like i want to get deeper into like the actual twin flame like like what's the point like what's the point of a twin flame relationship and it's really to make ourselves a better person and about yes. like what your services actually like what what are the strategies per se that you would tell a person on how to navigate the relationship and I, I think that number one like you just said is to play together but then it's mm -hmm. also like to give each other that space Yes. And to have goals together. You know, you don't have to do the same thing with each other all the time and st spend thousands of hours together, but you should have goals together. Like real, true twin flames usually have a mission. They have a mission in life together. Like Timothy and I, we want to have a healing center, a music venue, and a whole community for the people but also for ourselves where we have a, a recording studio and where we can just express ourselves. We are ministers. We want to be able to marry people, to give them the chance and the space to, to be engaged together and get married together and have a beautiful place where they can do it, have a ceremony. So this is our mission, but every twin flame has a mission. And this world, especially in the spiritual world, we're here to awaken others and we're here to show that true love is possible and that we can and go against true. all odds. <laughs> yeah, it's the twin flame relationship. Understand when a person goes, when everyone goes through trauma, they shut down and they live in survival mode. So it's habitual, a lot of behaviorisms that, that happen in that type of environment. It's just it's automatic is what I'm trying to say. It's like, it becomes like where you actually feel like it's a part of you. So the mission of a twin flame relationship te actually teaches how to find balance by, by surrendering to unconditional love through having compassion, forgiveness, and all the higher consciousness of which we consider a Christ consciousness to the, this higher awareness which everything is derived from unconditional love and it wouldn't be able to be done unless it came in a cute package right unless we <laughs> like we wouldn't stick around long enough to do it so what are some signs that that you know that you're ready to actually reunite with your twin flame and what are some signs that indicate that you're actually making like the progress and you both are making progress within your relationship a lot of times you see signs like for example numbers that are repetitive like 11 11 444 those are numbers you often see um be it on cell phones be it in, on house numbers um that is a sign from the universe saying that there is a connection 222 is definitely a number that repeats and is for the for the divine uh, partnership um so it's important, you, important to know that what she's saying is that when you see 222 it's like if you look at your clock and it says 222 if you happen to be walking and you see a sign and it has 222 if someone says call me and put in the pound code 222 like when you begin to see the signs and the synchronicities this is the way that the universe speaks to us this is again this is how the twin flame actually knows that 
you're my person. I'm being directed. It's not. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't mess up the situation. What it means <laughs> is, is that, you know, if we listen to the higher self, which is the God part of self, which is not filtered through our ego, but again, through unconditional love, we're going to, again, be met and find balance within that connection. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, then you will often have more dreams, more intense dreams with your partner. Um, you feel... You the feel same that. type of dreams, the same, the same type of dreams or, or well, like they, they just have, be, they can be repetitive, but they can also be like messages. Like you, you have a one, one time occurring dream and it is a message. Like you you dream you're being with your partner on the beach or you're, you're somewhere and he gives you a ring or he says something beautiful to you and you, it, it doesn't feel like a dream. It feels like, uh, you know, being in a, in a different dimension and you're actually really talking to that person. So that is another thing. Then the feeling of always being close to him or her, you know, you, you feel more connected spiritually to that person than you ever have before. That is definitely a sign that they're coming into your world again more. The person and then you can like hear them. the Yes, yes, absolutely. And then you might hear that person's name more often. You know, and, and you don't even know, like, it, it's a chance. Maybe other people are talking about that person in, on the street and it, that person has a certain name and it's the name of your partner and you just hear him or her and you're like, oh, wow, like, I did not expect that. <laughs> or you feel like you can't get away from it because a lot of times with a runner and a chaser, the runner is like, no, I don't want to surrender to this relationship because it's difficult. They annoy me. It means I have to actually do work. It means I have to change and be uncomfortable and I don't want to do that. So they try and run from it and then they get in the car and all they hear is it's like your name on like, play out through a song where they they go, go to like go to Helen on counter three, like wherever they are, they're, they're hearing the name. And it's almost like the more that they try not to think about, the more that they actually wind up thinking about because that's how love makes us surrender. The ego, that ego exactly. does not want to come down. You know? So that's so <laughs> funny. I, like, it's true. The, and, you also just said something else. You said you hear music, music, like love songs or even sad songs, happy songs. They occur out of nowhere. You go shopping and you hear the song that always connects you to that person. So right, that's that whatever you're going through, it's like it's like that movie Better Off Dead, where he was <laughs> dating someone and then they broke up, and every song was like, "Baby, come back." <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, or or like just these sad songs, and it just puts you in the space of that person, you know. Um, and it and. I, I have a thing that I, now you tell me whether or not you believe that this is right. I feel like our twin flame that is obviously a past life karmic mate. Now the twin flame like happens because both parties are ready to, to evolve. So both parties are karmic mates, but when they're ready and they've done enough work, then they can evolve to twin flame. Do you believe that? So are you saying they had more lives together in the past and they were karmic? Like they were going through a lot of things in the past in yes. past life. Like someone got, you know, someone died in the hands of the other person then, or they always wanted to be together, but they never could. Yes. Um, my understanding from a divine twin flame is that that is the first soul you have ever connected with in, a, in your very first past life like i have the memory of being on a different planet with timothy and meeting him over there on the planet sirius so that's <laughs> and that was and it doesn't sense. <laughs> you know where where i have like one where like i would get readings and they and they would say tell me that i died in in a past life with with my twin flame that like I died in a car accident I don't know how but it's like and it's almost just that person feels like home and there is deja vu from past lifetimes and that our 
supposed to be there to trigger and awaken what needs to be healed because the whole point of why we're here is to learn the lessons of love and we can't do that if we don't love ourselves that is very true yes well i think that that's what you said with the whole um that's what i got from you from when you said about um your twin flames and mira and like you know and it's not not easy and a lot of times we try and control the relationship as a way of survival but you know what else i love and possibly because i suffer from from the way I come across sometimes that it could seem like I'm very, uh, I'm very direct. And so when it's very directed and a person has a wound, it's very triggering. So a lot of times I don't pay attention to like, I pay attention to my own sensitivity, <laughs> but, but, you know, we don't, we don't realize sometimes. So when you said it's the language that you use, when dealing with your twin flame, like, so you're, because if you grew up in an environment where someone was really harsh to you, then you're going to like real unconsciously adapt to that behaviorism of dealing with people in the same manner that you were dealt with, but you wouldn't right. realize how you come across. So when you were saying um, those things, like it's repeat some of those the things, because I need some of it. <laughs> like like what is what 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 give give us some language the language is that you you don't say you are hurting me you know you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that it's i am i am hurt by your actions i am hurt by the way you talk to me you know that you make it per you make it about you not about the other person because otherwise the other person is going to feel attacked automatically you know we have this this mechanism inside of us that feels like as soon as someone says it's you then we're going to go like <laughs> you know so you know the, the best way to talk to someone is to say you know when you said this it hurt my feelings instead of saying you hurt my feelings when you said that you know it's it's more about making it about yourself so the other person doesn't feel like he or she is being attacked. I love that. That is, If you took anything away from this show, that's what you need <laughs> to take away from this show because a lot of times right out of the gate, like the really twin flame relationship can't even get off the ground because of the communication problems. Right, right. Well, the, the twin flame connection is the very much deepest soul connection there can be between two people. And the twin flames, they only exist once. You can have lots of soulmates, you can have karmic partners, and that just, you know, you can have them. And sometimes twin flames choose to be with their karmic, they choose to be with their other soulmate because it's easier. So if they don't want to work on anything, then they're going to just, you know, choose the easier path. But when Timothy and I met, we both called each other. I lived across the country. Um, I came to New York when I was 28, 2013, and I met him in 2015. And he was in other relationships before, but he, because of that, he knew what he wanted. He even had a course that he took where he was, uh, he got a piece of paper and he wrote down what he wanted to have in, in a woman and basically showed me that later. And it is pretty much what I am. So he called me into his life. You have to be ready. And usually, even if you say you are ready, you are not ready. <laughs> 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 it, 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 can take a, it can take years. It depends on where you are. What is really important is that you make room for your partner. You know, like I've learned that with my clients, that if you are, if you believe you want to have a twin flame relationship and you are not free, you don't you have family you have a husband you have uh you know anything that keeps you you have a great job that you don't want to leave you have to be ready when when timothy and i met he had to get rid of everything in order to be with me and that was a process that took two years for us to completely be together 
And it was hard. We had to let go of everything. When we moved in together in 2017, we, um, he had a house he rented and we had to sell everything that we couldn't put into the trailer or the, or the truck, including his beautiful guitar that he loves so much. And we, we didn't have that much anymore, you know, but I was used to that because when I came to New York, I only came with a backpack and the suitcase and that was it and I was able to help him get rid of things and he was able to you know I had to get rid of some of my beautiful statues that I love so much you know and so what's important to know too is is the whole getting rid of is a lot of times when we have wounds we accumulate things that are un necessary and we then form attachments and the whole point of spirituality is to realize that we shouldn't have any attachments because attachments means that we're codependent and when mm -hmm. we're codependent a relationship is not going to work out there's going to be financial problems this is good relationship is going to look like a roller coaster that's what it's going to look like you're going to feel yeah. like you're on a roller coaster and it's not a fun roller coaster either it's one that <laughs> really like it affects your health so the whole unloading and so, and the thing is, like you said, it both parties really have to be ready. And when you were also saying Timothy got rid of a lot of things, it's men tend to have to um, conquer their 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 passion, right? That's 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 their biggest obstacle. So getting rid of other people in their life. Because understand when we go through tra trauma and didn't have good role model, then we're afraid of that commitment. So it wasn't just to get rid of, of, of certain people and situations and experiences that no longer serve, but actually possessions that we, again, tend to identify with like, oh, I need this. This is who I am. Yes. For example, I used to have a stuffed animal and I had it until I met Timothy <laughs> I had it with me it traveled with me across the country across Europe it was everywhere with me and in a way you can see it as my childhood so when I was actually pretty much the year I met Timothy or the year after I went to Europe and I gave my cat to my little sister as a way for her to have a protector and a way for me to say, I'm grown up now, I have to let this all go. And I was 29, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I, I had that cat with me. It was the, the one thing that I was able to talk to all the time, no matter what I was going through. And it, it was alive for me. It was like my little soul friend that I was able to talk to. And I got rid of that, you know, and it was so easy. So when you are ready to be with your twin flame, you will be ready to let these things go. Yeah, but you don't need to get rid of like an animal or whatever, like to in order to like be with your twin flame. I just think because of the journey that you were taking through the country, you knew that it wouldn't be like the best, you know, for it. And so what what you're trying to say is that um that that it's like you're you're you were ready to let go of that attachment like like you said it was like your friend you used to tell exactly. like you no longer needed that security you and and what happened is you gave the cat a better life because the mm -hmm. cat then like was able to be taken care of and that so again when we tend to come from survival we tend to be more selfish where we're like i don't care whether the cat suffers the cat's coming with me you know what i mean well it, it was a stuffed animal it wasn't oh, a real cat oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 i'm talking about the stuffed animal that i oh, had that, that, that. Oh, okay and so, i had it until yeah but I had still it, when it I was, was security and you said you used to talk to it and it was like again it was like your little like so, like it was a security blanket mm -hmm. and so exactly. that you no longer needed it anymore and that, that's how you knew that you were evolved you were ready to take that that step and I feel like again it's unconditional love that 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 does so so what are the so do you work, you work on a one-on-one -on -one with people or do you work with the couples? 
I would work with couples if they want to, but for right now, I work with clients one on one. I do Zoom. I do a one on one coaching through the phone. If people were near me, I would do like a, a private one on one as well. Uh, I studied psychology for two years in Europe and I have become a life coach in 2017. And I know that I can ask the right questions to help people move forward. So right. what I do usually is we talk to each other and I just listen to the story and then I give little feedbacks and I, I um, ask them questions, you know, like what, you know, if someone isn't happy, I would be like, well, you know, what would make you happy? What would help you right now to be a little happier in a, in a happy place? You know, I bring out oh, the inner I, child in people. Yeah, I like the inner child because it's like that really is healing. When you're a therapist, I think in two, in uh, any type of therapist, you intuitively know what to ask, you know, um, but it's it's asking those right questions and why you work on a one on one. Why is a lot of times people would think that you're working with a a twin flame coach, you would need to work with both parties. But the truth of the matter is, it's usually um, you can't work with both parties until the one one person at least has it a little bit more evolved, where they can actually. To if they want to be because it's a choice it really is a choice to be in a twin flame relationship so you're going into it knowing that this person is going to trigger you it's going to be a difficult relationship but there's also going to be very worthwhile a lot of passion a lot of love a lot of um which is what makes it so difficult to walk away from so um you know i think that um it's important to know that twin flame coaches really are just coaches that teach um how to how to master oneself how to integrate those spiritual blocks so that they can then be in a union with their twin flame right and i because, feel like your retreats are gonna have that more of the couple sorry i couldn't hear you i said i feel like the retreats that you have will eventually be working more with couples oh yes and we we will work together to Timothy and I, and uh, we have talked about that. We would love to, you know, do one-on-ones and then together and then, you know, take the other person and go for walks and talk about those topics and, and do some exercises together. So I'm very excited for that. So can to you have some retreats. Me, I'm sorry. Can, can, can you just give, give us an example of an exercise that you would have like to do with your, with your with with a twin like if someone was to go to like a retreat with their like again with their person their special person that triggers them all over the place but they love them like what would be like an an exercise so well like we would we would let them sit together across from each other and you know give them five minutes each to talk about the things they want to talk about and that they have in their heart and the other person has to listen just listen and repeat it in their own way. And then it's their time, their turn to talk about it. And the other person listens and repeats because that is very important in a relationship. Timothy and I have hours sometimes where we just talk about what is going on in our life because we have figured out that you just have to really listen to each other and reflect things back because that is the way to heal. The best well, way. And the reason why it's important to note that when we've gone through experiences that are traumatic, that it really distorts our perception. Every time we go through a traumatic relationship or one a toxic relationship or just an imbalanced relationship, that unless we actually heal, we're seeing things through a distorted filter almost. So like that's important again about it might sound some, like very simple like oh the person just talks to no <laughs> what it is is it's that both parties see how their perception is of each other mm -hmm. both parties understand really understand where the other person is coming because the biggest thing is is that growing up with a lot of childhood trauma that you weren't allowed to express yourself you didn't feel comfortable to express yourself. So 
how we express ourselves is really important as well as how we interpret the information and that uh, that's a great exercise believe it or not because like I said we don't really take the time out to really fully listen and then what happens is we just eat it and then get angry and that tends to and you don't want to do that with the twin flame relationship because there's no. a lot of passion there's a lot of passion but it's like lighting a match near like you know uh gasoline it's gonna you're gonna <laughs> blow up I mean that's, you've seen the tv show snapped because <laughs> the person like does love but they just that took it to the extreme mm -hmm. it's like so, two fires bursting they become one and then it, it's an inferno <laughs> right it's true so tell us what upcoming events that that you have and where people can find your music tell us about your music because again you do a lot of different things as i mentioned in the beginning of the show you have the mandela the mandalas you got the um the music you have you know the the coaching so so tell yes. us where people can find this stuff so i have a i have the book and um i want to give all the people that are listening here, a 15% um, discount to the book. And I will give you the link and we will put it down. Um, so anyone who's been listening and who would be interested in my book, I will give you a 15% discount to be unique. That mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So we do that. Timothy plays hand pan and he plays beautiful guitar in 432 Hertz. And we do meditations together. Uh, we want to offer that too. And if you go on my blog, you will see the services that I do. You know, you're not getting off this show without like singing a little something because again, that music is something beautiful. So you have to like give us just like a line or two or whatever of a, a meditation that you do with your music. Okay. <laughs> well <laughs> The magic between Timothy and me is that he plays guitar and I sing to it sometimes out of nowhere. And we just create something then and there that we often use and turn into a real song. And we have some meditations on From the Ether. One song is called I Am Open. And that is almost like a meditation itself. And it has pictures. I did all the background to it. Dang it. <laughs> like <laughs> think just a line or two. I am open. I am open. I am open for love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And You're the welcome. music in the background, I mean, you can just imagine that's just a taste, <laughs> okay? I mean that real healing music. Now I don't know. Yes, and Timothy has it. written Timothy has written over sixty songs and in the last year, last seven years that we've been together, he has written probably forty of those songs, all inspired through our journey. And one of the most beautiful songs he just wrote that we want to put out very soon is called America the Beautiful and it's about our beautiful country. <laughs> and yeah, it's all that's it's Sorry, no, right? I said that's great. No, <laughs> I, I just said that's great. Yeah, no, I'm I'm so excited. I, I can't wait for him to bring out his music and hopefully soon we can all the two of us can show up and you and I and he can talk together too. That would be yeah. fun. Yeah, sure. Like I mean, I'd be very interested. I mean, I think that it's important that people incorporate spiritual hygiene into their every day and how simple it could be the the simple resources that that are available and music mm -hmm. is one of them and it's meditation is so important we grow so far away from ourselves that, that and you know one size definitely doesn't fit all one person's meditation is not going to work for someone else and i like your meditation because people People, I, I don't like to just listen to the music and so I like it when you can lose yourself in music it yes. lets your imagination go and exactly the whole point of 
like aligning yourself too is when you're listening to that music and you're and you're and you're embodying it that's how you manifest that's how you create that's how you can stay in alignment with that right frequency that your heart's mm -hmm. going to be open i love it exactly so my my blog is called la ara blog it's l a a r a blog.com and there I have my services and I want to offer um, a bundle or I'm offering a bundle for March and also for April where people can get my one-on-one -on -one coaching and they can get my book for free when they order the bundle. And it's four coachings of 60 minutes on the phone or on Zoom for free $88. And otherwise my private life coaching is... Um, $111 for 60 minutes so yeah so that is my discount you're getting a nice discount and yes. also um where can people find your music my music our music um yeah. our name is from the ether and you can find us on youtube as well as on spotify on spotify we are also from the ether it's a black and white picture and it has some of our most um beautiful songs in it one is called we are one and that is a totally absolutely beautiful twin flame song and wedding song and um it's in 432 with our recording from 2017 so you can find us on spotify as from the ether and if you want to i'll just sing one or two lines to that too sure sing it sing it <laughs> sing it <laughs> All of my life I have waited for you, a voice from afar. And with a smile, you came to me and showed me the truth. You spoke straight to my heart. Wherever I go, I'm always reminded of you. I feel you everywhere. Let's create our own world, complete and new will end despair we are one we are one i love it thank you thank you helen so much for being yeah. on my show i look forward to when you and timothy can come back and share a little bit about your upcoming ventures and um and newfound knowledge. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of Rewired. Um, tune in every week to hear different holistic and spiritual principles and practices that not only heal, but balance the body, mind, and spirit. It's all about being true to yourself, loving yourself. Also, I'd like to invite you to check out the Win Win Women store there. We have an array of products and services from the lovely women and hosts from the Win Win Women Network. There's a coach for everything. So if you're going through grieving process, well, there's a coach that actually has their book up and you can get that instant download. You can get it for discount prices. So you definitely want to take advantage. I also would like to invite you to check out my website. If you're looking for shadow healing coaching program, you can hook up to my YouTube channels there. I offer inner child healing, shadow healing, reparenting, and all the healing modalities to heal the effects of trauma. So again, you want to check it out at pureenergyhealer.com. There again, pureenergyhealer.com. Thank you again, Helen, for being on my show. And until next time, good until next time. Thank you so much for having me. Bye-bye, Helen. Thank you. Bye. It was lovely.